know water supply like the back of your hand, but are you familiar with residential fire sprinkler systems and how they utilize water supply? This brief video was created by the nonprofit Home Fire Sprinkler Coalition. The purpose is to provide the facts and help you prepare for home fire sprinkler system installations in your area. In the next few minutes, you'll learn the basics of residential fire sprinkler systems, their water usage, and other important information. Water utilities are pretty familiar with the traditional commercial and industrial fire connections, which are always a separate and distinct pipe from the domestic water supply to a building. The NFPA 13D fire standard allows designers to utilize just a single line that supplies both fire and domestic flow. First, a quick recap of why fire sprinklers are so important. Residential fires in one and two family dwellings result in more than 2,500 deaths, approximately 14,000 injuries, and $7 billion of property damage in the U.S. every year. Residents in your community are most vulnerable from fire right in their own homes. The key thing that happens with a sprinkler system is it slows the fire down um, and uh, e either significantly delays or prevents what's called flashover. Flashover is when the entire room and its contents, including the gases in the room, suddenly burst into flames. And if, and if you're in there, that's not a good thing. By preventing flashover, sprinklers improve the chance for occupants to escape. Home fires also take a heavy toll in injuries and deaths to first responders. Today's new homes incorporate lightweight materials and open construction techniques that have substantially increased the dangers for firefighters because they fail sooner in a fire. What we learned from our experiments was that fires in modern homes with open floor plans can create more dangerous conditions faster than legacy homes. We examined engineered floor systems versus dimensional lumber floor systems in our furnace in our laboratory as well as full-size homes built in the field. We found that engineered floor systems can collapse significantly faster than older dimensional lumber systems. One of the reasons the fire service is so passionate about residential sprinkler systems is not only does it protect the residents of the home, but it also protects the firefighters. An uncontrolled fire will quickly spread flames, heat, and smoke throughout a home. Flashover often occurs within four minutes after a fire starts. Tremendous damage occurs before the fire department arrives, which is typically nine to 12 minutes after the fire has started. The property loss in a home fire with a sprinkler system is typically only a fraction of the loss in an unsprinklered home. Fire sprinklers save water and reduce infrastructure costs. Fire sprinklers control fires using 90% less water than responding fire departments. The water will come on in the room where the fire is located. And instead of putting thousands of gallons on an entire structure, when maybe the fire is contained to one room, the sprinklers come on, obviously you're gonna use a lot less water. Sprinkler systems use, you know, on average, based upon National Fire Research Foundation studies, 10% of the water supply that's put onto a fire for an unsprinkled building. It's important to understand how a fire sprinkler system works to understand water supply needs. Sprinklers are linked by a network of piping, typically hidden behind walls and ceilings. A sprinkler is very simple, basically a heat-sensitive plug on a piping system. The plug is most commonly held in place by a glass tube that contains a liquid element that responds when the temperature near the sprinkler reaches 135 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. At those temperatures, the liquid expands until the glass bulb bursts, releasing water. The deflector will properly distribute the water. When a fire starts in a room, smoke and heat will rise to the ceiling and then across the ceiling surface. When the heat surrounds the sprinkler, the heat-sensitive element will quickly reach the sprinkler's operating temperature. The plug will release and water will flow. 
sprinklers operate individually and only in response to the high temperature of a fire. Smoke or a steam will not cause a sprinkler to activate. Interconnected smoke alarms also cannot cause the sprinklers to operate. Only the sprinkler closest to the fire will activate, spraying water directly on the flames. In most home fires, only one sprinkler is needed to control a fire. In most rooms, a single fire sprinkler will provide enough protection. Some larger great rooms or kitchens may need more than one sprinkler or a specially listed extended coverage sprinkler. There are three main types of sprinklers, pendant, sidewall, and concealed sprinklers, which may either be for ceilings or walls. Fire sprinklers are good for the environment. According to research conducted by FM Global for the Home Fire Sprinkler Coalition, automatic sprinklers reduce water pollution. When sprinklers are present in a fire, the resulting wastewater has fewer persistent pollutants, such as heavy metals and fewer solids. In a sprinkler system, maybe nothing's discharged to the environment because it's only a few hundred gallons. It might be contained right in the house. Whereas a larger flow is going to flow out into the street. It's going to be carrying the burned materials with it. There's contaminants with it. They get into the storm sewer. In our case, flows into the bay. FM Global's study, which captured wastewater from test fires with and without sprinklers, showed that the pH value of the test wastewater from unsprinklered fires exceeded the allowable discharge range of 5.5 to 9.0 required by most environmental agencies and was four orders of magnitude higher in alkalinity than the wastewater from the sprinklered test. Sprinklers can reduce fire damage by up to 97%, which means less waste is sent to the landfills. Sprinklers can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 98%. The American Water Works Association recognizes the increasing use of residential fire sprinkler systems and encourages that they be designed by licensed or credited professionals and installed by licensed fire sprinkler contractors or properly trained personnel. NFPA 13D is the standard for installation of sprinkler systems in one and two family dwellings. Under 13D, two types of residential fire sprinkler systems are permitted. Standalone systems, where the sprinkler system is independent of the plumbing system. And multi-purpose systems, where the fire sprinkler system is combined with the cold water plumbing. Proper hydraulic calculations are paramount to life safety, so NFPA 13D requires that residential fire sprinkler systems be installed by qualified professionals. The design of a system requires communication with the water utility so that available water pressure and flow to the system can be determined, and the design can meet the utility's requirements. It is important to emphasize that NFPA 13D requires that the water supply for a sprinkler system is only required to accommodate one or two operating sprinklers for a period of seven to 10 minutes. The water demand is not significant on a municipal water system. Most of the time, and I'm talking way up there in the 80s and 90% of the time, uh, only one head goes off because it then sprinkles down on the source of the fire and keeps it in check. So sizing for two is logical and only one's probably going to go off. In terms of the water demand, there's no impact of sprinkler systems on water demand. When the sprinkler systems go off, in, in most cases, it wouldn't affect the system at all. In most cases, the flow is between 15 gallons to 25 gallons per minute. Um, nothing more than what you'd see on the fixture count of uh, an average home. That allows us to tie it into the domestic system and really make it an extension of the existing plumbing system in the home. The connection includes a single supply from the water main to the house. It's also less cost to the builder to have a single line. Uh, it's probably just a more efficient design also. And in having this single line system, 
you really have now what is just an extension of the domestic water supply. Once inside the house, for standalone systems, the water delivery is split so that the domestic system is isolated from the fire sprinkler system. In areas like the Midwest, where homes are built with basements, the riser is typically located in the basement. In areas like California and many western states, where homes are built without basements, the riser is located in the garage. Under 13D for a standalone system, it is preferred that a water meter is not installed on the sprinkler line because the meter could produce friction or blockage or reduce water pressure. In the many jurisdictions where meters are required on standalone systems, the meter is placed before the split between the domestic and sprinkler lines. In these cases, the meter must be included in the hydraulic calculations for the sprinkler system. Obviously, in the case of combined multi-purpose domestic fire protection water lines, the lines will be metered. A typical sprinkler system should be designed so that water flow is at least 15 gallons per minute and up to a maximum of 40 gallons per minute. Backflow preventers are not required by NFPA 13D, but may be required by local code. Where required, backflow preventers and meters must be considered in hydraulic calculations. Many jurisdictions have settled on a different method of maintaining good water quality. In Philadelphia, we have a provision in that residential fire systems that are uh, supplying dedicated sprinkler heads have to have a connection from the sprinkler system to the toilet tank that's furthest from the water supply in the building. Thus, every time that toilet is flushed, it draws water through the fire line and keeps the water fresh in that line. Therefore, there's no need for any type of backflow prevention. In areas where homes are built without a municipal water supply or there is insufficient water pressure from the main, options include utilizing the home's well system. If the well alone does not have adequate pressure, a pump may be required. A tank and pump may be used on standalone systems. The pump is off until a fire causes a sprinkler to activate, when the pump will automatically turn on to provide the required water flow. A final option, a pressurized tank system, stores water under pressure, which is maintained by an external source, such as a nitrogen bottle. These are used when the power supply is unreliable. Because the focus of NFPA 13D is life safety, the standard does not require sprinklers in all areas of a dwelling. Sprinklers may be omitted from small bathrooms and closets. Sprinklers are not required in garages, open attached porches, or attics that are not used for living space. However, some jurisdictions do require sprinklers in those areas. NFPA 13D includes several options to ensure freeze protection. When the system is correctly installed to the requirements of NFPA 13D, freezing is not a problem. This may include installing sprinkler piping in interior walls, avoiding placement of pipes in unheated attics, or in the alternative, using insulation or installing dry pipe systems which keep all water out of sprinkler pipes until a sprinkler activates. Home fire sprinkler systems are designed to be essentially maintenance free. Occupants are encouraged to occasionally do some simple safeguarding to make sure their system is ready to work when called upon. A water flow test is recommended every six months. This requires opening the valve slowly if there is an alarm on the sprinkler system, it may take up to 60 seconds for the alarm to go off. Occupants need to make sure they know where the water will flow out when they do the test. Typically, it's right outside the home, so the water can run into the yard. If the sprinkler system is connected to a central alarm monitoring system, it's important that the monitoring company is notified that the sprinkler system is being tested, so they know it's not a real fire. If there is a tank, they should confirm the water level is full monthly. If there is a pump, operate it monthly. We know that water demand is one of your biggest concerns about residential fire sprinkler systems. Here are the facts. 
In a survey cited by the Fire Protection Research Foundation, water usage was tracked at 35 one and two family home fires in eight different communities. An average of 3,254 gallons of water was discharged for firefighting at homes without fire sprinkler protection. An average of 341 gallons of total water usage per fire was utilized in homes with fire sprinkler systems. That is a 90% reduction in water demand. The evidence shows that there is far less water used to control fires in homes with sprinklers. Because of their life safety benefits and environmental advantages, many communities have developed policies to support installation of fire sprinklers in homes. Also, East Bay Mud has no standby fee. Uh, standby fees are uh, theoretically charged to recover the cost of extraordinary things that you would do for uh, sprinkled water supply. Uh, so since we, we charge directly for the hardware that, that's required to serve each of the customers, there, there's really nothing else in the system that we would do any different because of the residential fire sprinkler. Communities across the country are offering incentives for homes protected with fire sprinklers. The state of New Jersey has a law that eliminates the standby fees for standalone fire service water lines of two inches or less. Altamonte Springs, Florida allows a 40% credit against the water connection charge for residences with fire sprinklers. Reduced fire hydrant spacing requirements is another policy some communities have adopted to encourage the use of residential fire sprinklers. When we passed our initial ordinance, um, there was an estimate out there that the city of Scottsdale was projected to save at least 7.1 to 7.5 million dollars on infrastructure costs alone. A majority of that is going to be in the water infrastructure where we've increased the spacing of fire hydrants. We've also reduced the fire flow requirements that are typically in the fire codes by anywhere from up to 50 to 75 percent because we're having fully sprinkler developments. Well working with the, with the fire department at the time, uh, one of the, the concessions that we wanted to make to the building community to show them that there would be a minimal impact in terms of cost was to show them that we had a current spacing without the fire sprinklers and by putting in the fire sprinklers that that spacing could be relaxed in most subdivisions that they were going to be saving some pretty significant money on the spacing of those fire hydrants. And from our standpoint, from the water department, a fire hydrant can be a fairly costly uh, expenditure in terms of appurtenance maintenance. In the development of residential fire sprinkler policy, it is critical for all stakeholders to have a seat at the table. Well, obviously, anytime you're looking at change, there's always some concerns on the part of the community, the part of the building community, and we had to get everyone involved and make sure that everyone was comfortable. And one of the issues was the concern of the sizing of water meters, that it was going to create uh, a much larger size water meter for residential applications and we had to show that that really wasn't going to be the case. That was a, a task force or a committee made up of, uh, of water purveyors. I was one of about five um, fire agency folks, uh, NFPA folks, uh, builders, uh, the, the Home Builders Association. Uh, so kind of all of the actors that sort of care about this issue from an economic perspective, a safety perspective, a firefighting perspective, a water perspective. Uh, we had to initially educate each other as to our angles and our views because we had huge misconceptions about each other. Once we sorted that through, then we landed on the recommendations and of course the code change. Don't wait. Get educated on residential fire sprinkler systems. Start to develop your policy now. Work with officials in your jurisdiction or your jurisdictions and be proactive. Residential fire sprinkler systems are, are coming. If they're not in your jurisdiction now, it's just a matter of when. So don't wait, get started. This video has focused narrowly on water supply issues. To learn more details about all aspects of residential fire sprinkler systems and installations, please visit the Home Fire Sprinkler Coalition website. All HFSC information is available free of charge. HFSC is non-commercial and a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization. This video was produced with generous funding through a fire prevention and safety grant.